Hello everyone, welcome to this special CUBE Conversation. I'm John Furrier here in the CUBE studios in Palo Alto, California. I'm here with special guest, Sean Douglas, who's the founder and CEO of Amber Data. Amberdata.io, it's a hot blockchain based uh, analytics startup, kind of taking a different approach. And obviously we'd like to highlight some of the startups that are doing pretty amazing things. Sean, welcome to this CUBE conversation. Great, thank you very much for having me here. Um, so you have an enterprise background, you're an entrepreneur, um, technical, been a CTO at EMC, you've helped EMC run their venture capital firms over the years, helped them build it up from scratch, uh, done a variety of startups, kind of cloud, kind of like large scale. Um, now doing a blockchain startup, that's, I find super interesting. I right. think you might have more there than you think, but that's my opinion, seeing the demo. Uh, for the folks watching, amberdata.io is the site. Um, let's talk about that. I mean, obviously blockchain, we've been covering pretty heavily. Right. Uh, recently with, with theCUBE, we've been covering Bitcoin since 2010 on our, our blog, siliconangle.com. But you're seeing a uh, renaissance in software development uh, with cloud computing. But now right. you're starting to see a new wave coming. We've been documenting, we've been calling it, you know, the future of money, the future of work the future of infrastructure because what blockchain and, and decentralized applications are doing is it's changing the stack a bit. Right. Uh, and you've been in, in many involved in those waves. So you're at the heart of it. So I got to ask you, you know, as an entrepreneur, before we get into the, what your company does, I want to just get your take on, you know, I mean, you got to look at this market and say, it's a wide open space. Right. As an entrepreneur is doing a startup, what's it like, what's your view, and how do you see the marketplace uh, evolving? Yeah. Um, that's a great question, there's a lot there. Let me try to unpack that the best that I can. Um, so having gone between startup to big company to investor, help buy, build, sell in, in, in companies and operating for as long as I have in Silicon Valley, I think, as you said, technology and innovation happen in waves. And I think that waves are mini revolutions, if you will. And I think that revolutions are about addressing fundamental human need. If we look at, you know, look to, look to history to see where the future is going. Um, if you look at the Industrial Revolution, it was about uh, automation and supply. Uh, in, I mean, uh, production chains and, and and to be able to produce things at scale. If you look at the Information Age, it was about the ability to communicate and the servers and the networks and the web 2.0 companies that arose out of that was around communication. That was another major wave. If you look at um, what's happening with AI right now and self-driving cars, that's about the ability for the need to think, right? And you're starting to see algorithms and machine learning applied to Google self-driving cars and you know, just about every facet of our life AI is touching. You're using Siri at home, whatever you're using. I think what we're seeing with blockchain is that next wave, it's that next revolution. And that revolution, I believe, is about trust and about decentralization. So coming out of web 2.0, we saw participatory and non-participatory consolidations in creation of juggernauts of technology, the Facebooks of the world, the Amazons of the world, the, on, on the other side, the Equifaxes of the world where you didn't opt in to, in exchange for being the product to use their platform, they just got your data. We've seen violation of that trust in data breaches you know, at every major player, you know, Equifax being the, the bad guy in this case where they've lost every single citizen in the United States <laughs> data and we never benefited from that but we carry the liability forward. And what we're seeing with blockchain is the ability for um, people to leverage decentralized platforms and smart contract platforms specifically as mechanisms to easily deploy with zero barrier to entry these, you know, these smart contract vending machines, if you will, into a, a world where people are taking back trust. So I, that's what we see, and we see that opportunity across both the enterprise space, because we're, we're hardcore enterprise people that we're building Ember Data, but we're also seeing new enterprises being created on chain, and that list is really long. So yeah. it's pretty, it's, yeah. it's definitely a big wave. Well, the one, obviously <laughs> blockchain is an infrastructure thing. People get right. all crazy over that, which I think is legit. Right. And there's some people out there saying, uh, oh, blockchain is you know, not legit. They don't really know what they're talking about, right. in my opinion. And that's just, and a lot of people confuse. So there's a lot of people who are, you know, obviously don't see it. Some people do. Um, but I think the phenomenon that's interesting is, you know, taking a tech stack approach is, 
if you look at the decentralized application market, right. where Ethereum, for instance, has got a lot of the most developers, and they're working fast on some technical challenges they have, but they're, they're making progress. The D applications, the distributed, I mean, the decentralized right. applications, that's like an application server on the blockchain. Yeah, exactly. So what that happens is the things are happening, so you almost think of it, and you and I were talking about this, is that you know, the vending machine of the future or the transaction service layer is that decentralized smart contract. Absolutely. Because that's where the value is going to be yeah. captured. Absolutely. And created and captured. Let me unpack that, because I, that's spot on. I 100% agree with what you're saying there, is that what is a blockchain? A blockchain is effectively a decentralized database and network put together. What I think is interesting is smart contract platforms that put a virtual machine on top of that, like Ethereum has the EVM, um, where it's your application server. And what are smart contracts? Smart contracts, like you said, are vending machines. They're a vending machine that has the appropriate level of security, the appropriate level of service, and allows you to have an autonomous transaction with that. When you walk up to a Pepsi machine, you put in a dollar, you expect to get back a Pepsi, it works, you go away, you don't think anything about it. What blockchain is allowing anybody to do is to publish a smart contract on chain and monetize that at the most elemental level. It's, it's analogous to if Amazon allowed you to deploy a Lambda function and monetize that. It's analogous to um, if eBusiness Suite allowed you to monetize your plugins from an Oracle world. It's analogous to if SAP, with, when Shai Agassi was still there doing composable applications, <laughs> allowed you to, as a vendor, anybody publish into that SAP ecosystem and monetize that. Yeah. This is a massive, massive transformation and it reduces barriers to entries for people to come in and compete with juggernauts like an Amazon or an Oracle because if the barrier to entry is they're publishing into a globally available decentralized yeah. and, you know, and platform, And the thing too right? that's interesting, and just to tie that together with right. what's happening in the cloud world is, you look at like Kubernetes containers and microservices, right. the ability to be efficient with microservices allows for that IT infrastructure to completely be uh, replatformized. Exactly. So what you're getting at is with, with, the, with smart contracts and, and the atomic nature of the transaction, you can be laser focused and scale transactions. Right and be efficient. So yeah. the efficiency is a big part of this, isn't it? It, it is, it's, there's efficiency and there's the ability to decompose things. And um, that's been a trend for as long as I've been in technology, right? It's, yeah. first it was you know, cloud services, then it was SOA, then it was cloud, yeah. and now it's serverless. It's blockchain is just on that spectrum. There's not a lot new here actually, right? It's a continuum of technology and I think all of these waves are enabled by different revolutionary forces. Uh, well, operational, about. operational change right. and software drives it, obviously. And you've got the, the, yeah. the, the characteristics of blockchain immutability, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. And dApps is just a new way to kind of write right. software for that. Mm -hmm. AKA create those vending machines or transactional right. uh, services. So I got to ask you, so with, with what you guys are doing, I want to tie that together because one of the things we've been reporting on theCUBE is the piece of uh, action that's most hyped up is ICOs. Sure. Um, these blockchain apps that are changing in the old guard and disrupting incumbents. But there's not a lot of tooling around it. So, right. you, you know, if you think about like trading platforms. Right. 24 seven, traders have access to stuff. Um, now the world's a 24 seven, 365 global. There's not a lot of tooling, not a lot of stuff. So this instant industry's created, this new wave is coming. You're building some tooling. So I want to get your thoughts on the support needed to do this. So right. Say I put my business on the blockchain. Right. And with use developers to do decentralized applications. Yeah, so. I need tools. Uh, absolutely, like, that's, that's exactly. So, you know, I've got a little gray hair here and I grew up, you know, building <laughs> internet software at scale, right? And whenever you run anything in production, you always have your network operations center. You have your AppD, you have your Splunks, you have your New Relics, you have all of this, you've instrumented your infrastructure, you've instrumented your application transactions, you've instrumented search for operational log data. You need to be able to triage a security instance, you need to be able to respond to performance or production issues, you need to be able to communicate with your customers. None of this existed when I looked at the blockchain space and I'm like, I don't get it, this is, a massive opportunity because if you look at the enterprise space, because public 
right now, sure, it's very interesting. ICOs are the killer use case. There's three hundred. Um, million dollars per hour traversing uh, in the public Ethereum network. 50% of those are going to smart contracts. A lot of that is actual transactional trading volume. But step back from the hype for a yeah. second, and you look at IBM, you look at VMware, you look at Cisco, you look at Microsoft, you look at you know all these guys, JP Morgan with Quorum. You look at, they all have major bets that are starting to evolve around taking yeah. things and removing intermediaries just like public chain, but they're doing it things like uh, swaps, credit default swaps, interest swaps, currency swaps. They're talking about remo uh, remo removing escrow services. They're talking so about- So pre-existing companies are going to take the efficiency it's, side of this and, and drive yeah, it. It's gonna, it's, it is a massive transformation, right? And especially when they're, they're working with their trading partners, there's almost a, what, a 2006 VMware data center consolidation play? Remember when the data centers were full of servers and then all of a sudden, you know, they started pulling back the number of servers and turning off the AC because it, they, they were able to take entire data center floors and consolidate them inside of VMs where they had three and four virtual yeah. machines and a server. And I think that you're going to get those same types of efficiencies over time once they get to pass some scaling issues yeah. around blockchain where you don't have to have seven copies of your data and across your front office, your back office, across your trading partner, you can have one single source of truth and operate in an open, transparent world where, you're, where you can reduce some of those inefficiencies. Um, and then there's the whole business transformation play that yeah. you know, there's, there's just, I think it's, yeah. it's a perfect storm. You yeah. got the consolidation piece, which is right. more efficient operationally, and then you got the top line revenue opportunity right. with disrupting kind of industries with new transactional models, new right. business models, and token economics. Okay, yeah. so we, we, we've talked a lot about in the cube. I want to talk to you about your company, Amber right. Data. So you guys are trying to make sense of what's happening because right. if you're going to put a business on the on the blockchain. And you need this. Use right. decentralized applications as a transactional application server, if right. you will, for lack of a better description. You got to know what's going on. Right. And there's gas involved, you got to pay the mining fees. So where there's costs, you need visibility. Right. Um, so the old school, the old model was you'd have KPIs, right. set some alerts, dashboarding. You're doing that, right? That's so, what we've done, yes. So take a minute to explain what, what Amber Data's doing. Right. Um, did you do a round of funding? What's going on with the company? You got the product up there, amberdata.io. Right. Yeah, so, uh, let me unpack that there's a lot there. So uh, we started the company end of August. We raised a round of funding with traditional enterprise venture capital firm, Hummer Winblad, uh, Lars Leckie, amazing investor, really understands enterprise software and how to uh, enable companies to grow. Amazing partner to work with. Um, we've been heads down building a product about 45 days ago, we launched our platform live, uh, and what we have today is we have um, instrumentation for blockchain infrastructure, decentralized applications, transactions, and an ontology-based uh, search that gives a clean user experience where you can be search-driven to drill into a smart contract, a transaction into a block, and you know, if you're building on top of chain, I mean, we're a classic picks and shovels play. It's pure, it's, it's enterprise software. We built this for enterprises. We, today our platform supports public Ethereum, but it was really to demonstrate if we can do this for the entire Ethereum network, and we can do this for at scale, of course we can do this for any enterprise. And today we support public Ethereum and Quorum, which is private Ethereum. Uh, it's a JP Morgan project that I think is the one of the leaders in um, in private blockchain, and uh, that's a project that's being supported by the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. We're, we will also, in our working with IBM, I was just on the, the um, Hyperledger um, meet technical steering committee this morning, I participate in that. Um, so we will support Hyperledger in the future, we will support multiple other public and private chains. So the private ecosystem today is, you know, enterprise Ethereum, a la Quorum, it is Hyperledger, it is Corda. On the public side, it is Ethereum, it is Stellar, it is, you know, things like Quantum that are emerging, Neo are emerging. So is your, is your business model um, SaaS subscription? It's a SaaS, yes, it's a SaaS model. And today, um, we support public chain as a demonstration of it, but we're also working on 
uh, allowing people to just like a, a data dog or what have you, where you, we have a connector, you, we can pull your data in, it's private, it's only visible for you for your private blockchain, or we could deploy into their private cloud or into their so private data So is amperdata.io like a demo site, or is that more of what's it's, the It's a demonstration it's, of the ability to instrument blockchain infrastructure, applications, transactions, whiz search, the ability to set alerts on every single panel, which are your KPIs, if you're going to run a business, you either have explicit or implicit service level agreements, and you need to be able to instrument those service level agreements with KPIs, and those KPIs you need to be able to set alerts, events, receive emails, yeah. You know, all of the well, things I love that you the would demo. Expect. We got for the demo. Yeah. I think the demo would be a great freemium model because it showed just my notes here: smart contracts on the de uh, de decentralized application, top 50 sort of transaction uh, volume, token velocity, change in price. Because you know, gas and gas, you said paying the gas to get the transaction written. I mean, this is kind of like spot pricing for Amazon almost. You <laughs> right. need to understand what am I right. paying for if there's an SLA involved in a smart contract. Absolutely, you got to know the policy involved, right? So again, this is like old school, like enterprise thinking, but right. the world is now a global enterprise if you think about it. Yeah, um, uh, you d absolutely need transparent, transparency into your operating costs. Those are your transaction costs mm -hmm. of either for your customers to consume your service or for you to provide your service. And prior to this, there was very little, little transparency. It's ironic, is that the most the trustless, transparent platform had no real view into it, and that's what we've built. We've built transparency and are enabling you to trust the trustless platform to get transparency into your, your DAP uh, KPIs. And so, for example, if you're building, like, um, you look at like uh, Ether Deltas. Ether Deltas is um, one of the non custodial smart contract based exchanges. They're doing $70 million a month in transaction volume. I don't know what they did before. Um, we've, we've talked to with people that are consumers of that, and we've talked to people on pretty much all of the decentralized exchange platforms, but the ability to understand what are the number of transactions per hour, per second, per minute that are hitting my smart contract, what are the token transfers, if I've, I've tokenized my unit economics, who are the top 10 callers to my contract, is my smart contract calling other contracts, what are my pending transactions, what is my book of trades, what is market depth on my gas prices, what I need to be able to search if I've got failure, show me transactions between yeah. this date, that date, to, from, where. That is all mission critical stuff that you need if you're going to operate any business. So a lot of operational data, and that's phenomenal. Yeah. But are you worried that people aren't going to adopt blockchain? I mean, oh, I'm that... not worried about that at all. <laughs> that is, I, I actually think that there's an entire, when we started this, we were focused on enterprises exclusively and we saw what we were doing on public Ethereum as a marketing ploy, we're like, hey, we'll go instrument the whole public Ethereum network. I'm a big data guy. We've built high throughput, four terabytes a day of social graph ingestion platforms. We're like, public Ethereum, you know, not that, not that transactionally intensive. We're going to do this for the world. Now, after building the platform and seeing $300 million an hour with 50% of those transactions going to smart contracts, we're seeing a new enterprise emerge. You can look at companies like, um, you know, Saya, Storage Coin, you know, so IPFS. So you can actually see the activity. I'm sure everything's right. encrypted, but right. you can look at the metadata and get uh, the absolutely. patterns. I mean, right. you're essentially looking at the, the, the transactional right. model. You look almost like a stock exchange. We, can, we have full transparency into every transaction that's happening on chain, and we can see, like the other day I did a tweet um, on, uh, there was a, 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 a token that's traded. I don't know, you know, we're, we're not interested in the trading side, but it's the use case that has the most buzz. So, and we have transparency, so we see it. We're like, hey, this smart contract went from 2,000 transactions, you know, to 40,000 transactions. What is going on, right? And yeah. we, we actually saw that. You can and, see the I mean, pump and dump scams right. too. You well, can you can fully see that. Oh right? And providing transparency is now, it, it's yeah. becoming easy for anybody to search for anything. Well, it's a great serve, free service, and I, pre yeah. I appreciate you doing it. I've been playing with that over the weekend. Thank you. I love well, it. I'm like, hmm, check I can it make out. some trades on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and we love you feedback know. from anybody yeah. that's seeing this, amberdata.io, and um, I could be reached at sean at amberdata.io. So, I mean, obviously funding, you must have a ton of VCs uh, throwing money at you. Um, is that the case? Are you thinking about an ICO? What's the thoughts on uh, yeah. capital expansion? Yeah. You also got a, a great hot startup here, so what's the, what's the funding We've strategy? We've been heads down on building things that we're obviously getting inbound, but you know, 
we're well funded. We're in a, I think we're in a position of strength. What we're focused on is taking the mountain and defining and, and being the category leader. I think right now we have defined There's it. There's no one else doing it. So you're so like yeah, exactly. you know, only one doing it. So we are going to define the space for operational monitoring analytics for public and private blockchain and be that single pane of glass that allows enterprises to build on or around uh, you know, decentralized smart contract platforms or you know, private smart contract platforms and we're going to take that hill and we're going to stay out yeah. in front. So right now we're heads down. <laughs> we'll eventually Can I get you know, an API to the data set? Can you just give me an API? <laughs> you have like a fire hose opportunity yeah, so there? So we are enabling this as a platform to drive network effects and we're working with several exchanges. We're, we're you know, the, some of the non-custodial exchanges. We've got a lot of inbound interest from people more on the trading side. We're evaluating yeah. whether we do that. Um, and uh, we want people to be able to build on top of our platform, other analytics tools, yeah. you know, connect to exchanges, connect what have you, right? And create that marketplace, create those APIs, inroads, and yeah. then allow people to, to drive that. And on the ICO oh. front, we're really not focused on, on that. We're, we're, we're enterprise software. Well, the Cube, we're we, the Cube backed, team right? would love to have a, uh, an API and program with that for the Cube Insights. We'd love to look at that. Uh, option. Oh, that would be great, right. Let's we work together and collaborate on that. Right. I got to ask you about the, the data, because this is fascinating coming right. from a search background that I come from. It's almost like the Google crawler. You yeah. went out, or is Google it true that you, you guys <laughs> crawled all the Genesis nodes on Ethereum, so you got into the, the yeah. Genesis nodes? That's correct. So from the Genesis nodes to today, you've essentially gotten all those instrumented. Right. And have real-time data coming yes. in. Yes, that is correct. Uh, so as far as I know, we're the only people that have done this. It's uh, computationally intensive and from the data structure perspective, pretty difficult to do. But what we've done is, and, and that has to do with the data structures in the way Ethereum works, whether that be public or private, is that there's, there's an account-based blockchain that has transactions, but then the smart contracts and transfers of tokens happen in messages. So what we've done is we have the ability to, or we, we have done and we have the ability to do in perpetuity moving forward, we instrument every transaction, every internal transaction, every token transfer with time series data, indexed, searchable. We also have graph as well as relational views into the data to be able to give to transparency, enable trust, enable you to triage an issue. Like, you know, I think about having worked at you know, other enterprises in the past where you have a, you know, a security incident that you need to respond to. We're currently under attack. We need to find out who, what are they doing? What have they done? What is our exposure? How do we contain that? How do we you know, a, a, a deal with that? Without what we have, you can't do that. It not yeah. you, you got to like write Python scripts and and do you know yeah, you're API calls, ghost, right? By the time you get it, it's right. Over. And then for our enterprises, they've got hardcore regulatory compliance considerations that yeah. you need to deal with ad hoc queries from an auditor. You need to be able to show, hey, I've got confidentiality, I have availability, I have integrity. Well, even the, I, these smart contracts yeah. are, are still software. They right. and you know we interviewed uh, Hart Teswani, who's got a company that's doing just He's that killing, auditing, right? auditing yeah. the smart contracts because someone's got to write the code and the code's right. got vulnerabilities. Absolutely. So this, this, there's a compliance aspect coming quickly. Yes, yes, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I mean, so there's it's an amazing space. There's a tremendous amount going on. Yeah. It's moving super fast. Picks and shovels for the uh, new Picks the new shovels. the new mine not miners they're <laughs> literally miners. But um, <laughs> Sean, great to have you on. Congratulations Thank on, you. Your, on your new startup. I think you got a great product. Um, I've been playing with the data. Love it. I think it's fascinating. If you could summarize the data that you've learned from the tool that you've built in the platform, what's what's the summary? What if you had to kind of tease it out? What's actually happening right now in the market on Ethereum? network with the apps and blockchain. Right, so um, there is, so at the end of the day, Ethereum is a smart contract platform, and it pans out that 50% of the transactions are actually going to smart contracts, which is a great validation, right? Two, the actual value being transferred in interacting with smart contracts is $300 million an hour. That is, it's on an enterprise software perspective, it's not huge, but it's definitely a validation. It's legit. It's legit. The number of smart contracts that have been created in the last three months is 400%. It is just going through the roof. Some of this, there's a lot of junk, yeah. but there's a lot of stuff that people are building new enterprises. And on the enterprise side, 
we're seeing real business cases going into production. We're working with a few large customers now yeah. on instrumenting real, you know, removing, you know, instrumenting real over-the-counter type use cases. Yeah. Um, it's it's very very. Well, interesting you know my times. rant. I've been ranting about some of these. Um, you know, bankers that have come from old school banking, they're young right. kids too, so they're, not, they're younger than me, but they're trying to do valuation me uh, keep a mechanisms yeah. around, you know, companies and, and tokens. And they're using like discounted cash flow. Now, I mean, I get how they can go <laughs> yeah. there, right? Because they learned that in school. Yeah, right. uh, but the reality is there's a new school going on, the yeah. school's in session. If you don't have the data, right. I mean, you have very interesting valuation variables that could be constructed right on these new models that need to be looked at. I mean, how do you value a company? Certainly uh, velocity, yep, volume. You know, who's actually yeah. doing the transactions, are they Unique. real smart contracts? Right. So there's a lot of gamification and I won't say scams, but I would say you yeah. know, the investors want the transparency yeah. too. I think it's amazing is that we have that transparency, we provide that transparency as a free service to the community right now. And uh, the ability to have transparency into transaction volume for smart contracts, token velocity, number of unique callers, the market capitalization, the change in price, this gives you the ability to value that. That's something that you know we've thought about extensively is maybe we should just provide valuation as a service on just, just these, just these you know, assets that are publicly available. Yeah, I don't know. You had you know, a lot of opportunities, so yeah. great job, congratulations, good work. You guys really done the work uh, yeah. on this project, love it, and again, it validates the reality of the smart contracts, the application side of the business yeah. changing. Sean Douglas here inside theCUBE for CUBE Conversation here in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.